This is the Cosmic Bible, God's Word for today and beyond. Oh, there, don't eat my microphone. Yeah. And I am Dr. Steve Gibbler, and I am your guide into the biblical text where truth lives. In the past videos, we have looked at the biblical text regarding the existence of the Nephilim and the giants, and how what is contained in the biblical text most likely gives credibility to the legends and evidence of giants on multiple continents. We also have seen as the uh, prophesied end time draws near, it is expected to see these same types of phenomena. So I have presented the spiritual beings that are mentioned in the biblical text as extraterrestrials because that's what they are. They are not of this world. Specifically, we concentrated on the sons of God, their offspring, the Nephilim, Nephilim's offspring, the giants, and the various tribes of the Canaanites, and all those that are mentioned that made their way around the world. So we are now going to move into a parallel territory where the unseen realm meets the seen realm. And this is the interaction of the spiritual beings mentioned in scripture with humans. But these beings that are referred to as demons, evil or unclean spirits, devils, and their presence in the world past, present, and future. Uh, there are some extra biblical writings that shed much light on the subject. Many have pondered why there is such a predominance of demons and the casting out of demons in the New Testament, but it seems absent from the Old Testament. I guess the easiest way to explain it is, it is a matter of emphasis of the text. The Old Testament emphasis was upon the coming of the promised one, the Messiah, the Christ. And also remember that there are many other extra biblical writings that contain vital information about this Old Testament time period and the intertestamental time period, but they're not included in our Bibles. And what we will also see is that uh, there are uh, a translation um, specifics that uh, they may not have used the best terms to describe what the Hebrew uh, text actually was saying. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But there are extra biblical texts. I'm going to just bring up one that you may be familiar with. Uh, it's actually a, histor uh, a historical book. It's a book of history of ancient Jewish history and uh, it's very well known by Bible students and theologians it has been for many 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 years um, many have used this writing to interpret the historical context of the biblical text and I am speaking of Flavius Josephus Flavius Josephus was a first century Jewish historian and he died about 100 AD he was a commander of the Jewish forces in Galilee, and he would later become a Roman citizen. He was employed by the Flavian emperors, uh, uh, Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. And so we can read in his book, and it's actually book eight, and it's called the Antiquities of the Jews. And so I'm going to read a portion of of this and it's about King Solomon it says now the sagacity and wisdom which God had bestowed on Solomon was so great that he exceeded the ancients God also enabled him to learn that skill which expels demons which is a science useful and sanative to men he composed such incantations also by which distempers are alleviated and he left behind him the manner of using exorcisms by which they drive away demons. 
so that they never return. And this method of cure is of great force to this day. Well, there you go. King Solomon cast out evil spirits. And it's speculated that King David did <coughs> as well. And even Jesus references this reality as he was being accused of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub or of Satan. And he said, well, by what power did the sons of Israel, your sons of Israel, cast out demons? Right? So it was a known fact that they had this, this skill and that Solomon had this skill and that demonic possession was a reality even in the Old Testament. It's just not as highlighted. And as I mentioned before, there are some terms and words that have been translated into English that would have been better served instead of translating the meaning, translate the actual word, because a lot of the words are actually names of evil spirits or demons that uh, tell us what they do, but it's really a name. So the Dead Sea Scrolls also offer much information to us today, information that wasn't available previously, before 1947, and it took several you know, years, decades, to um, prepare and uh, translate the, the scrolls and to have enough time to do a good, good textual criticism and investigation. And, and now there is more and more and more information coming out about what these uh, uh, artifacts actually uh, are and what they actually have and what they actually say. So there's a collection of about 972 documents that were copied by the Essenes around 2,000 years ago. Um, and they were discovered in the caves near Qumran, like I said, in 1947. And it's our understanding that the Essenes were uh, those uh, copying and preserving the ancient scriptures were the true Zedek priests, the, the first, the family of the first high priests who were in hiding from the Greeks and the Romans. And so they continued to uh, preserve the writings and not only those that are found in the Hebrew canon, but also more writings uh, from that time period. So there is a manuscript from the Qumran, and it's uh, known as 11Q11. Um, and uh, it was, uh, the last time it was copied was about between 50 and 68 uh, AD and contains text uh, from four psalms um, but what was interesting is these psalms were to be used for exorcisms against demons now many scholars regard that four of these songs uh, uh, included maybe a, a musical context to them uh, for people afflicted by demons and along with them was another text that was found that involves uh, exorcism against demons and that was a psalm that also is found in the Hebrew canon and in our Bibles it's Psalms 91 so, uh, this Psalm 91 has now been considered as a prominent psalm connected with exorcisms of demonic forces in both Jewish and Christian traditions. And this will take us back to what we read Josephus say about King Solomon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in uh, some rabbinic texts that refer to the Psalm 91, it's referred to as the song for people afflicted by.
by demons. Well, there's something you don't always read about when you're studying the Bible, right? In church today. So here is something that has been known as the Psalm for people afflicted by demons. So we have Psalm 91 in our Bible, so let's go ahead and read it. And I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. The Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near you. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On the hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adler, and the young lion and the serpent you will trample, trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. <clears throat> well, you might be saying that's a pretty psalm. And uh, it's been a psalm that has been memorized and quoted by many in times of distress and conflict. <clears throat> but where's this idea of referring to evil spirits or exorcism? It's all in the translation. So I'm going to read another version using Hebrew words and names. Instead of trying to translate the meaning of some of these words, we will use these words uh, as names. Uh, because there's a, a, a much credible evidence that, that these are names. Uh, a good example... <clears throat> is let's think about a famous uh, biblical character, uh, Joshua, uh, Moses' second-hand man and the ultimate leader of the children of Israel as they took him into the promised land. His name Joshua in Hebrew is Yeshua. Yeshua, but it means salvation. And yes, that is the name of our Savior Jesus, Yeshua. What is he? Yeshua. In the Greek, Jesus. So, instead of referring to the man as salvation, we refer to the man as Joshua. Right? Although his name means salvation, it's his name. Joshua. Yeshua. So that's what we're going to do with the text of Psalms 91, is instead of giving a translation of what the name means, we're just going to read the name, okay? So we're just going to make those types of edits. Well, that's what we're going to do in Psalm 91. Use more specific titles rather than word meanings. So here is the text of Psalm 91. Not the way it appears in your Bible, but probably a more accurate translation. Here we go. He who dwells in the secret place of ha el will rest in the shadow of Shaddai. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in whom I trust. For he will deliver me from the snare of the Yakash, from the Debher. He will cover you with his pinions. Under his wings you will take refuge. His truth is a shield and a buckler. Be not afraid of the terror of demons or evil spirits who walk at night. Or of the arrow of the spirit of death that he looses during the day. Of the death that walks in darkness. Of the band of demons that attack at noon. A thousand may fall at your right side. And ten thousand on your right hand. But it will not come near you. 
You will only look with your eyes and see the reward of the wicked. For you, Yahweh, are my refuge. You have made ha Hafanyan your habitation. No evil shall happen to you, neither shall any uh, plague, which is, could be another demon, demonic name, evil spirit name, uh, come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands so that you won't dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent underfoot. Because he has set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I will satisfy him with long life and show him my Yeshua, my salvation. <clears throat> so, just reading through this Psalms 91, uh, we come across several names that were known Canaanite gods. Yakosh, Deber, and some uh, other references to uh, demons or uh, devils. And the angel of our uh, spirit of death, uh, demons who walk at night, the death that walks in darkness, the band of demons that attack at noon. These are very specific entities um, that were known at the time, right? They were known at the time. So we see why this now can be considered a psalm of exorcist or a song for those afflicted by evil spirits or by demons. And isn't it interesting um, that, uh, let's read verse 11 and 12. For he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands so that you won't dash your foot against a stone. Now, does that sound familiar? Maybe recorded in the Gospels? Maybe referring to when Satan was testing Jesus the Messiah in the wilderness? And we need to remember, too, that the wilderness was a place that was known to be the realm of evil spirits. And we'll get into that in, in subsequent broadcasts. But this is what Satan told Jesus when he told him to uh, jump off the, the top of the temple, right? He says, take a flying leap here, Jesus. Doesn't the word say he'll give his angels charge over you and guard you in all your ways? So we'll bear you up in their hands so that you won't dash your foot against a stone. Yeah, well, this was an, a psalm of exorcism that, that Satan knew. <laughs> And he was throwing it in Jesus' face. And all Jesus said was, Do not tempt the Lord thy God. Be gone. And that was the end. But it's interesting that Satan knew the psalm. That he picked it specifically. Because it had been used against his cohorts uh, since King Solomon. So therefore we can see that there are deities, spirits, demonic entities that were known during the Old Testament time and feared and are mentioned here in this text. But somehow, through translation, it was, they came to where the true meaning had been obscured. So it's there. You just have to look for it. Right? But it's there. It's right in front of us. I do want to point out one other important Old Testament biblical piece here on this broadcast, and that is Deuteronomy 32.17. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. Let me read it to you. They sacrificed two demons that were no gods, no Elohim, to Elohim gods they had never known, to new Elohim gods that had come recently, whom your fathers had never dreaded. The King James Version in verse 17 it says they sacrifice to devils. So here we have this term to demons and devils. Now this was translators' choices of what words to use, right? So this section of scripture is following upon the heels of what had previously happened at the Tower of Babel, 
Remember that man was under the leadership of Nimrod at that time. Nimrod had taken the leadership of mankind. He claimed that Nimrod was a giant himself, and he was a man opposed to God. And he led the people to build a tower, a ziggurat, in order to bring the gods down. He built it up into heaven in order to bring the gods down, to connect with those lesser gods, the sons of God, like those who had rebelled in the days of Noah. The Most High God, Yahweh, said, this is not going to happen. Uh, he confounded their languages. He assigned some of these small G gods over the nations. You know, these entities were territorial, and that is they were geographically located with the various nations uh, after the Tower of Babel. Now, this is what we were told in Deuteronomy 32.8. Deuteronomy 32.8, when the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance. When he divided mankind, he fixed the borders, territorial uh, locations of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Elohim, the sons of God. Now here in verse 17 of chapter 32 of Deuteronomy, we see that the peoples of the other nations began worshiping the sons of God that had been placed over them. And that the sons of God allowed the people to worship them instead of ruling as regents of Yahweh. Right? So the people, <clears throat> uh, the more, not they told them exactly which came first, but we see the tendency of people to want to connect with these sons of God and to worship them. And being free will creatures, the sons of God could acquiesce or oppose God and allow people to worship them and then exhibit control over the people. And it's, it looks like the Shadim, they're either, it's either another name for the sons of Elohim or they're a inferior um, class of spiritual entities. Uh, that were also present. And I think the latter might be more accurate. But there were other spiritual entities that looks like. And um, in 32.17 it says it sa they sacrificed to demons that were not, they were no Elohim. So it seems that these devils or these demons, they were not Elohim. But the people also sacrificed to the Elohim that they had not known, to new Elohim that had just come upon the scene, that were different from those their fathers had known, right? So that's kind of the text of Deuteronomy 32, 17. So this term, demon or devil, that's used here, um, in the Hebrew, is used here for the first time. In Deuteronomy 32, 17, and it's used only one other time in the Old Testament text. And that's in Psalms 106, 37, where it says, They sacrificed their sons and daughters to the demons. They sacrificed their sons and daughters to the demons. So, Shadim. Shadim is the Hebrew word translated as demon or devil. Shadim. And it refers to the territorial spirit that was connected to nations of the world. And I think these are inferior spiritual entities to the Elohim, the sons of God. And I think the term devils might be a better word for us to think about than demon because the word demon kind of takes on a a somewhat different meaning later and especially in intertestamental period writings and in the New Testament. It's a little bit different. But I do believe that the, the English Standard Version here is accurate in the translation saying that the Shadim were not Elohim but were worshipped as well as were the sons of Elohim. And I think we'll see a connection between these Shadim, or demons, and 
idols as we move forward. But what we do see as these peoples begin worshiping these other small g's and the Shadim, according to the world order that these entities had set up in their territorial governance. I want you to think about that for just a moment. The, El, the sons of Elohim, the Bene Elohim, the sons of God, the Shadim, were always known as territorial spirits, territorial entities located to a nation or and or a geographic location. And they set up these territorial governances, right? <clears throat> so keep that in mind. And the people were, were to worship these, these entities according to the, 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 uh, the world order that these territorial entities had set up. And many of them required the sacrifice of children. These are bad players here on earth. These are the extraterrestrials that we, uh, we have spoken of and that have and are manipulating and interacting with humans to oppose the most high God. So we see there was a very well-developed theology of the dark forces of evil in the Old Testament, ranging from the defecting sons of God, the Shadim, evil spirits that could um, impose themselves upon humans, and a class that was subject to being cast out, off and away from the human host. Now, it's my opinion that most Christians don't truly want to know the truth, the whole truth. They want to stay within their own comfort level of what they believe, their status quo, their own personal homeostasis. Christianity has developed its own status quo. Denominations have developed their own comfort level of translation and interpretation. But there is a greater reality of truth that is right here in the biblical text for those who want to search it out. We say, sometimes wonder if these deeper truths, <clears throat> why they're not manifest in mainstream uh, Christianity or why they're even highlighted when teaching the Old and the New Testament. And I believe I have a potential answer. It's found in the Bible. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, verses 1 and 2. It says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready. I think maybe it's time for these deeper truths to be known and shared. I think it's time. So this is the Cosmic Bible, God's word for today and beyond. And remember, know the truth, stand on the truth, and speak the truth. We'll see you next time. Thank you.